All right, in uh, the Journal of General Medicine, they did, uh, in, the, in the Journal of New England Journal of Medicine, they looked at a follow-up of 5,000 patients who had bariatric surgery in the United States, either the lap band or the Roux & Y gastric bypass. And the conclusion, and we're gonna hear this over and over again, the lap band, very safe, not very effective. The Roux & Y gastric bypass, more effective, much higher complication rate and not revisable or reversible. Okay, and so um, the recent um, articles here I think are exciting because they confirm that same kind of problem. I like the lap band because of its safety and reversibility. I don't like it because over time it has a high failure rate. The studies coming from Europe continue to confirm that lap band works great for the first two years. Close to 80% success rate in the first two years. By five years, the success rate's down to about 50-50. And by 10 years, some studies coming from Switzerland, France, Finland, and many of the other countries in Europe where the band is being abandoned, no pun intended, um, the failure rate of the lap band may be up to 100% by 10 years. So a lot of the advantages of the lap band tend to burn out over time. Now we like the lap band because if you're a failed lap band, we can fix you, we can take care of you. Um, our medical student who's visiting from Canada spent some time with a lap band team in Canada and uh, her comments were he, she saw lots of lap band patients returning and I, I hope I'm not misquoting you and when they came back, a lot of them were having problems, with nausea, vomiting, and weight regain or inadequate weight loss and she said she was working with very good compassionate kind doctors but they just didn't understand their patients because when they had a patient come back with a failed lap band they looked at the patient and said bad patient, bad patient. <laughs> and they had a moderate number of these and they kept saying boy these are a lot of bad patients we argue that that's a bad surgery. Now the Roux & Y gastric bypass much more powerful, but this data and others show a higher death rate, higher complication rate, uh, long-term complications are reoperation, wound infection, bowel obstruction, anastomotic stricture, um, and so that uh, although the weight loss was better, 68% of excess weight loss lost in the Roux & Ys compared to 45% for the bands, the problem is the complications and dangerous, difficult, or deadly to revise. So I get a phone call once a day to once a week from a Roux and Y or a lap band patient who's failed. And the lap band patients, we can help. We feel bad, of course, that they had a failure, but uh, we can help them. The Roux and Y patients, we can't help, and so that's really one of the big problems with the Roux and Y. So that's the latest data. There's a, an interesting article in the Journal of the American Medical Association on kids and lap bands in Australia. They took 25 patients and they put them either on a diet and exercise program and not surprisingly they failed. The other 25 they gave a lap band to and at two years the lap band patients had better weight loss. Also a third of them had had a second operation already. Uh, 25 people within two years a third had been reoperated for complications from their lap band. And the data we would predict is going to show over five years and ten years, all those little kids are going to come to subsequent operations. So this is where we get to the conclusion where we like the, la the MGB because the MGB has the simplicity and the safety of the lap band, but it's also powerful and even more powerful than the Roux and Y gastric bypass. So um, anyways, that's the latest update and I'll stop our videos there this morning. So thank you all for putting up with it.